Hi, my name is Joe Clark, and today we're going to be talking about the benefits and caveats of managed and unmanaged Kubernetes. When we talk about Kubernetes, there's a lot of different things that we have to take into account. But one of the main ones is whether or not we want to use a managed or an unmanaged Kubernetes environment. There are some pretty distinct differences between the two of them, so let's go over them now. When we're examining the two different ways that we can run Kubernetes, managed and unmanaged effectively means we've got other folks on the team that are doing some of the jobs for us that we might otherwise have to do in unmanaged. In unmanaged, we sometimes like to refer that as all the way down to the operating system support, where we are supporting the operating system, every single piece of the Kubernetes environment infinitely, uh, sometimes without support. So we're going to look at some of the different categories of support and why we might use one or the other. And we're going to sort of use a check, check, plus, check, minus rating system to sort of walk through that. So let's talk first about scale. To scale up and to scale down, when we've got a managed Kubernetes environments, that's one of the things that we definitely give a check plus to, simply because we can expand new clusters, sometimes with an API call, with an ARM template, with a CloudFormation template, or simply by using the Tanzu CLI to provision net new clusters. Very easy to scale, right? And we definitely got a check minus, unfortunately, for unmanaged because it means that we have to build that automation ourselves to actually expand and contract clusters as we're looking to add additional resources. So for scale, we give managed a check plus and unmanaged a check minus. When we're talking about support, this is extremely important for all manner of Kubernetes environments simply because there are a lot of open source packages that we may not be entirely familiar with or comfortable with. And so the question comes up, well, what kind of support do I have for this environment? And if it's okay with you to just open incidents and you know uh, problems on GitHub pages for open source projects, that's okay. But we definitely see that when we've got managed environments, there are more things that are simply managed by the providers that can be supported. And so for unmanaged, we'll talk about this later with human resources. It's basically, nope, uh, you're gonna be on GitHub opening incidents. When we talk about cost, this is definitely one where we can say, this can be a check for managed, right? Um, that you can affordably acquire managed Kubernetes environments and that for unmanaged, this is most certainly a check plus. And we say it's free. We want to say, you know, Kubernetes is a free project. You can open openly download it without a problem. There's no problem with that. There's no support that goes along with that per se. So it's kind of free like a puppy, not like a beer. You have to take care of it once you have it in production. And that's something that we cannot forget about. When we're talking about maintenance for the environment, we're gonna be talking about upgrades. We're talking about deprovisioning and provisioning new environments. We most certainly give a check plus to manage Kubernetes environments simply because there are tools that allow us to do that in a more seamless fashion and maintenance is definitely somewhat of a check minus. Again, these are things where we have to build our own test environments. We have to build our own upgrade automation that goes along with that uh, for taking care of environments. So as you look to start to treat Kubernetes clusters like cattle themselves, just like the applications that might be running on them, this is something that you definitely have to take into account. Expert human resources. This is one where you don't get a pass on not understanding Kubernetes because you've got to manage Kubernetes environments. You still have to understand how it works. So you might have a check there, but you most certainly need expert human resources to build from scratch Kubernetes and run that either in virtual machines or on bare metal. You definitely need expert human resources, maybe sometimes probably with a long Linux beard to go with it. When we talk about security, this is something where we definitely end up giving a check plus again to manage Kubernetes environments simply because there are more ways that we can lean on our partners to do the jobs of ensuring that we are running updated code and have updated code to run that has security vulnerabilities addressed in it. Now, those security vulnerabilities are usually addressed in upstream, but it's on us to make sure that we are maintaining that environment and uh, planning for seamless upgrades, testing those upgrade paths and all good things. And then finally, one of the main things that we end up talking about is ease of start. And how easy is it really to get off the ground and, and get running with Kubernetes? 
And uh, we end up saying that, yeah, for sure, with a managed Kubernetes environment, you're going to have a lot easier time working with something that's managed uh, by another party that can help do some of the job of provisioning, lifecycle management, and ongoing operations along the way. And we would most certainly give this a check minus over here. You can get started, but if you've ever watched Kelsey Hightower's Kubernetes the hard way, things have gotten a lot easier since then. But it's still really difficult to get started from scratch and go to a point where you're production ready. Of note, check out some of our other videos where we're talking about production readiness of Kubernetes clusters and what that really means to be production ready. And finally, I just kind of wanted to note, you know, just in general, it's a trap. You still need experience managing Kubernetes. You still have to completely understand many different aspects of all the software that's involved here. Just going with a managed Kubernetes environment does not give you a buy to where you don't have to understand how the API server works or how etcd works. These are integral components to how Kubernetes works. You have to understand that and understand how each various managed Kubernetes environment has implemented their controls and their lifecycle management. I'm Joe Clark. Thanks for watching.